Well, fame and fortune. Many crave it, few attain it, and some are destroyed by it. For Greg Fisher, a young Sydney property developer, the quest for money and the spotlight was almost his undoing. The Sydney businessman later turned drug dealer and then spent eight years in jail. Now he has written a book. Greg Fisher joins us now in the studio. Greg, great to have you in. I know you've flown in from Europe, so I hope you're feeling OK. Yes, I am. Thank Thanks you. so much for popping in. Greg, Pleasure. how do you go from a successful businessman to spending eight years in jail? Well, it's obviously a very big story. I mean, it started with uh, the collapse of the Satellite Group, which was a company that I founded. Uh, and uh, that was a, a dust up between myself and the chairman of the board at that time. Uh, from there, I uh, went into the world of drugs. And uh, when my assets were frozen by ASIC following the collapse of the company, um, I became just like any other drug user. I uh, became drug dependent. To fund it, I started to deal, to deal, uh, then went into further drugs. And the big scourge, the big problem was falling in under the spell of ice. To go from Greg Fisher, successful businessman, to inmate number 378121, how did you reconcile that? Have you indeed ever reconciled that? Um, I've taken ownership of it. I, I've accepted that that is uh, what I did. Uh, it was uh, obviously when you fight so hard to build up a company and you uh, achieve it, to have that uh, fall apart and then to fall into the world of drugs, to then fall into the world of the underworld and then into jail uh, is utter despair. Uh, but once you actually get to the point of owning what it is that you have done, you can start the repair job. And I had seven years and ten months in jail for that repair job. Uh, and I'm fortunate at the end of my jail time, I ended up going on works release and being part of uh, a community centre which I now head. What happened? Was there one moment in that jail time where that switch happened, where that ownership happened or was there a moment you can remember or was it a gradual process? I can tell you it was the slam of the first cell door that turned me from an addict to a non-addict. Literally the time when the cell door closed, from that moment, ten and a half years ago, I have never craved a single drug. It was almost like it had to happen and if it didn't happen I most likely would have been dead. I know that sounds extreme, but the reality is that ice, you don't see old ice addicts. And the reason you don't see old ice addicts is because the power of that drug is beyond any other. And as a result, people just don't survive it. You write in your book of yourself, your younger self, I wanted wealth and I pursued it shamelessly. Why did you do that? Um, Look, I think I enjoyed the toys, I enjoyed the, the success, I enjoyed the fun, uh, I enjoyed the, the uh, chase of the deal. Uh, on the professional side, I, I was good at doing the deal, I was good at putting it together, and so I did chase it. And then success came with that, and once the success came, you want more. And it, became, it really becomes a drug in itself. Um, so I did, I did um, pursue it uh, aggressively. Once I attained a high level of wealth, I was incredibly lonely. I was incredibly depressed. And uh, I used to say to my father, you know, I just can't believe how depressed I am. And he used to say, well, look, you've got all this. I just had no soul. So having achieved all this great wealth, it just didn't make me happy. Have you found that soul again? And you speak quite a lot about redemption. Where have you found yourself now? And I know your connections with humans and the world around you much more meaningful? Once I was in jail, I realised I needed to reskill. I was no, probably no longer going to be welcome in the corporate world, is how I felt at the time. I think that might have changed by now. But certainly at the time, I felt that I would not be welcome in the corporate world. So I decided to reskill. And I went to, uh, to university whilst I was in jail. I got another degree, Bachelor of Human Services, majoring in Indigenous Studies and Community Development. Uh, it was there that I realised that I had more to offer the world, but just in a different way. Uh, then I ended up, for some reason, at our big kitchen, which is a place which deals with humanity. Uh, by the time I finished my sentence, I was then invited to become the general manager, using my past commercial skills for greater social cause. Uh, and, and in that process of helping others, I must say selfishly, it has really helped me as well. On that issue, you said in, of your time in business you had developed a sense of entitlement to living a wonderful life. Do you feel as though now you are living a wonderful life? I truly am. 
I truly am living a life now that I am absolutely happy with. Uh, what I have in my life, I have in my life. I own and I accept and I love. Uh, what I have in my life has nothing to do with masses amount of wealth anymore, but it has a lot to do with humanity, and I get a great buzz out of that every day. Greg, I'm curious about what happens to friendships and relationships and family when you go through such a dramatic change in your life and spend that time in jail. Do you lose a lot of those connections? Do you have to reconnect with them later on, or do you start again? You do have to reconnect, and one of the hardest things about going to jail is actually getting out of jail, because you wonder where you are going to fit into life. And and one of the hardest things as I describe in my book was actually even going to a shop and having to make a choice for the first time, deciding what drink I was going to buy, led, uh, brought on an, an anxiety attack. Mm. In terms of friends though, I was actually pleasantly surprised at how many people were there at the other side. Not everybody came to visit me while I was in jail, but I talk in my jail about uh, the A-list, the celebrity world. A lot of people think that they're flakes, flaky friends. They have truly been there at the other side of this as well, and I've been very impressed with that and very grateful. Greg Fisher, an extraordinary story, extraordinary life. Thanks so much for coming to Afternoons this afternoon and sharing it with us, and also in your book, Inside Out. Thank you very much. Thanks so Thanks much, Greg. See you soon.